Today I'm going to be talking about the Bandai Movie Monster series Godzilla 1954 Retro Blue version. For those of you who don't know, this guy was released around the same time this freaking eyesore was. It was made a Godzilla Store exclusive, and ironically, I didn't get this from the Godzilla Store. I actually got this from Mendarake because the very same day that I finally decided that it's time to add this guy into my collection, he sold out in the Godzilla Store, which is pretty much a death certificate for Godzilla Store exclusive figures because then they go to the aftermarket and it's just terrible there. Thankfully, Corey sent me a link in the quickness and I was able to snag this lovely little gentleman up for this very review. So thank you, Mandarake. Thank you, Corey. Let's get started. Now these two are indeed a child of the same mold, but unfortunately they suffer from the same amount of problems, albeit this guy suffers from it a little bit less than this dude does. For anybody who didn't see my review of this lad, I find him to be extremely lazy. No highlights on the knees, the chest, nothing on the nails and on the toenails, and of course we have that basic do not finish the tail mark. Some people tout this as screen accurate. I tout it as extremely lazy because a darker base color with highlights on the head, the chest, and the knees with the toes and the claws fully painted, fantastic. This is my 1954 figure. I'm not going to wholly use the fully painted dorsal fins all the way to the tip of the tail argument because unfortunately the half painted dorsal fins is just a normal thing for the Bandai Movie Monster series these days. One of the only things that I think this figure actually improved on was the sculpt for the dorsal fins because they are much deeper and have sharper cuts and just look sharper to begin with. Other than that, this thing is an absolute eyesore and is without a doubt the Movie Monster series weakest release of all time. Yeah, I've become a lot less kind to this thing over the years and... Ugh, you're great in sculpt, it's just... This is unacceptable, I'm sorry. In terms of the tags, you can see that one is clearly black and white, one's got a little bit more color to it. This guy has the 65th anniversary celebration logo on it, this guy does not. You're essentially going to get the same thing on the back of both tags, and for the most part, you'll get the same on the inside of the tags as well. Now, since this guy is a Godzilla store exclusive, I have to give him the double sleeve method. And now that he is fully sold out on the Godzilla store, I think this is going to be all the more important. That, and it just looks really, really cool. Now for those wondering why this thing is called Retro Blue, I do believe that this is possibly from one of the original Marusan Godzilla figures. They kind of have the similar paint jobs going on, blue and silver with red eyes. Originally I thought it might have been the NES Godzilla, but that just seems a little bit more fitting. I can't officially tell you, I don't officially know. But anyway, let's take a closer look at what makes this figure tick. Now despite my initial disdain of the Movie Monster series 1954 Godzilla, I will say that the detail is very much on point. Yeah, no matter where you look, you're going to get all that fantastic 1954 detail, and it's just going to look all the more better here in blue. I do wish that the toenails were painted, I do wish that the claws were painted, but over here we have some silver on the chest. Now, it might not be the most recognizable or easy to spot from a faraway view, but honestly, I really like that this is kind of like a dusty silver. It doesn't actually look like it's painted on there. I enjoy that a lot actually. I just wish that it was in more than one place because as you can see, nothing on the legs, nothing on the arms, we got a little bit on the neck, and that's pretty much it. Like the tail definitely could have used a little bit of that, but the tail could have used, you know, all that metallic blue as well. But anyway, so this guy's got a splotch on his head just like most of the 1954 figures do. But what differs him from the 2019 standard release is that it actually looks like a highlight and not a mistake. A mistake. And as well, you can see this guy's got some red eyes with some very strong plain black pupils. And yes, those teeth are silver with a very nice, strong, vibrant red tongue in there as well. I do so think you'll be able to see the eye color a lot better here as well. Just look at that. Very, very nice. The back and the dorsal fins are the only other areas where you're going to see some alternating paint. And most of it is going to be this very, very nice metallic blue. And you will get some of that sparkly silver on the back as well, which is a very, very nice touch, which again, I wish was 
present on other parts of the figure, Bandai. The metallic blue really does help the detail pop out a lot. I mean, just look at that. All those little holes and indentations, the curves. It all just looks so very awesome. And it's gonna look like that on the other side as well. And over here, you can see even more of that sparkly paint. It's just, why didn't you do the entirety of the tail? You see, this pisses me off because you can see metallic blue on this dorsal fin. You can especially see it over here. Like it's half painted there, Bandai, why? Why couldn't you just go the extra mile for an exclusive figure and just paint everything metallic blue? Why'd you have to do my boy like that, Bandai? Why? Now when it comes to detail, yeah, I'm gonna give this a full star because it looks fantastic. It's just the paint. I love the paint scheme that's going on with this figure, but it drastically could have used more. This thing would have looked so much better with so much more of that metallic blue and more of that sparkly silver on different areas of the figure. But yet again, you leave everything blank, Bandai. That Oh, I gotta calm down. I love the paint scheme, but I'm going to give it an <laughs> I'm going to give it half a star, not an X. But what about articulation? Let's find out. You will be getting the standard articulation all the way around at the arms, all the way around at the legs over here, glue seal at the tail, which you can break, but I'm not going to, and nothing at the head. So essentially it's the same exact thing as the other one to which I'll just give it another full star because that's exactly what I was expecting. No surprises here. If Bandai was really out here honoring Maru-san, I wish they would have gone a little bit of the extra mile, maybe added another shade of blue, more of that silver, and a fully painted back and tail. The fact that they are releasing Godzilla Store exclusive figures and they feature just as much amount of paint as a standard release still just irks me. I really do feel something that has the term exclusive in it, deserves exclusive paint and more of it. I was very close to giving the paint an X on this, but just because I have a bias towards the blues and the reds, I just about changed my mind. Bandai, if you're going to label something as an exclusive, make it worth it. Because I guarantee you, whatever crazy prices this thing is going up for on eBay, it is absolutely not worth it. In fact, the price I paid for this thing wasn't worth it. And that was store price, essentially. Listen, if you like the way the 1954-2019 reissue looks, and if you like the way this thing looks, by all means, get it. I'm not gonna say you're wrong for liking it. I'm not going to say you have terrible taste for liking it. I mean, I bought both of them, so what does that say about me? <laughs> it's just upsetting that Bandai would call this an exclusive and paint it so haphazardly. Like, at least add more silver to it. I don't know. Let's just hope the three other Godzilla Store exclusive figures I picked up along with this lad will put me in a better mood. Until next time, everybody. I'll see you all then and there. Peace. Holy shit!